Hey everyone, welcome back to Part Out where we talk about off-road rigs and accessories. Now today is part three of the cheapest Rubicon JK build series. Today we're going to take the current suspension that's on there, completely rip it all out, clean it all up underneath, and then we're going to upfit it with an all new JKS J-rated suspension system that's going to completely transform the way this Jeep performs. So let's go take a look at the kit, go over all the details about it, and then get to work. Hey everybody, that's, we already did that. Here it is, this is the all new JKS J-Crawl suspension system. This system has all the bells and whistles we're gonna need to transform this Jeep to be the rock crawler that we want it to be. Now this is actually part of JKS's all new J-rated suspension line where they actually have J ratings for all sorts of different styles of users. So they have suspension systems for the overlander, two tracker guy, all the way up to the rock crawling, crazy Baja running Jeeps with the coilovers, all that kind of stuff. But let's focus on this kit. Now this system is gonna replace all of the control arms with the J-Flex control arms. That's gonna have a flex end at one end and then it's gonna have the OE style bushing at the other. It's gonna be a great setup. It's gonna ride great for this Jeep. It's also gonna give us a lot of articulation. Next we have the dual rate coil springs which are gonna help us for both on and off road. It's gonna give us the on road comfort that we need as well as the rigidity that we need for off road use. It's gonna be a great setup for the Jeep. And to pair along with that, we actually have the Fox 2.0 Performance Series shocks with the remote reservoir. These shocks are gonna allow us to have extra fluid running through, so that way we can cycle the shocks a lot harder, a lot faster. It's gonna handle everything that we put at it. I'm really excited to see how they perform when we get this Jeep out on the trails. Obviously, one of the next things that JKS has been very well known for are the quicker disconnects. Everybody loves this product. Um, the electronic disconnects that came factory with this Jeep, obviously don't, work anymore, so shocker. So we're gonna fix it with the JKS Quicker Disconnects. I was gonna do that anyways, regardless. Um, very easy to use, they pop on and off, that way we can get full articulation out of the suspension when we disconnect the front. Another thing that a lot of people know JKS for is their heavy duty front track bar. I can't say enough good things about this, it's adjustable, it'll get the job done, and it'll be just a great way to finish out the kit as far as having a good riding, confidence inspiring drive. My buddy Jordan just pulled in, so let's go ahead and start wrenching on this Jeep. Good morning, beautiful. Hi, sweetheart. We're gonna do a stock suspension droop travel test just to see where we're at. And uh, we're gonna use the forklift to do that. So let's let's go and see and get a measurement. You're good. Keep going. Yep, that's good. Things. Things. All right, let's get a quick measurement. We got a whopping 17 inches. Okay, so you're probably noticing from the last episode that the grill has now changed. I decided to change that out because the original silver one that was on there was stained in rust because. That's a thing. So we got rid of the silver grill, replaced it with a black one. I think it makes it look a little bit better. We also got some LED turn signals. We have new LED headlights coming in as well. We're gonna get those changed out a little bit later for the next episode. You'll also notice that there's no top end doors on the Jeep. How about that? It was uh, 50 degrees for a day. And so I was like, yeah, let's, let's go for a cruise. And turns out in Michigan, you only get 50 degrees for a day or two, and then it's back down to 10, 15 degrees. So it's, it's gonna stay in the garage for a while. First what? step, tires. Tires? I mean, uh, I don't know if we need this socket. We might need this socket. Or have, this one. May have gotten a few things stuck in sockets from the last episode. If you didn't see the last episode, feel free to check it out. We'll link it in the description. It was a mess. Are you even wearing a JKS shirt? I am, look at me. Man, it's like I told him ahead of time what kind of lift we're putting on this Jeep. Weird. Oh my goodness, the first bolt. The first bolt came out perfect. I'm sorry, the what bolt? First bolt. Okay. <laughs> what did I say? I think you said four. <laughs> Let's 
Starting to run into some bolt issues, so. We got fire. We got fire. <laughs> did you make a wish? I did. Happy birthday. Hey. Did you wish that the project would just be over? Yes. <laughs> the color it used to be oh or this is the color it was and this is the color it now is. i don't think that's no. how i don't think that's how rust works oh. Hercules. Hercules. Yeah. what we got here people is we've got a broken bolt mixed with rust jordan knows the remedy for it you want to demonstrate that real quick yep done what was i gonna say So along with everything that we're doing today, we're also gonna upgrade the steering because that is a necessary thing to do, especially if you plan on taking the vehicle off-road and doing all sorts of stupid, crazy things on the rock piles. So what we have here is the Steer Smarts, uh, Drag Link, Tie Rod, all that. Yeah, Tie Rod. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Is we're gonna do the upgraded Drag Link and Tie Rods. So that way we have a heavy duty setup in the front because the, the Tie Rod bar is one of the first things to come in contact with rocks as far as before your axle. So we wanna make sure that's extra strong. We also wanna make sure we can get a solid alignment out of this thing. Another reason to upgrade your steering is if you're running a larger tire size, you wanna make sure you have extra added control over everything that's going on in the front. So this is gonna be a great setup for us and I'm really looking forward to getting it on the Jeep and it's gonna really, hey Cody. But also we're gonna do a couple extra added things that Steer Smarts makes, which is Steer Smarts. We're also gonna add in a few extra uh, reinforcement brackets. So we've got over here, we've got our um, front track bar uh, reinforcement kit, which is gonna help because obviously we have a rusty frame and we just wanna add a little bit extra strength in there. So it's gonna help out a lot as well as reinforcement for the front axle mount side. really goes well with the two-tone so we got the black paint for the control arm with the brown rust of the rest of the jeep this bueno this yeah. well that'll work so one thing i'm doing right now i'm doing jordan's doing i'm watching because i'm cool like that or i'm just mechanically not handy i guess We'll go with that, that one, right? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that would be the more accurate one. Yeah. Is we're actually going to do some preventative maintenance. We're going to replace the bushings that are in the axle, and we just got some nice high quality Moog ball, jo ball joints. We got some nice high, high quality Moog bushings that we're going to be putting in there that'll help keep the suspension from binding up in the front. So here we go. Jordan did pretty much everything. Uh, I kind of helped out here and there. Um, like I said, we've got our heavy duty Yeti XD steering by Steer Smarts up here. We have the JKS track bar with a reinforcement from Steer Smarts to make the whole thing just a lot more rigid and stronger. We've got the front lift installed with the J Flex control arms, dual rate coil springs, Fox 2.0 performance series shocks. This is really looking pretty good. I mean, it's making the rust look a lot better. Jordan's happy. Thrilled. He's thrilled that we're done with the front. Because the back should be smooth sailing. So let's get to, to doing something. I can't something talk. different that we can talk about. Yes. Words are hard. 
can't talk at all today. We just had Chinese and we're pretty, we're tired. We're tired. We got some food comas going on. This Midwest time change. I'm it's, the mid it's the Midwest time change. <laughs> it's the Midwest time change. Milwaukee shows no mercy. Never. I live at 194 East Rose Road. This is the Milwaukee Half Inch Impact. I'd love to be sponsored. I'll wear anything you guys want me to. Banana hammocks included. You know what? Sure, they might be into that. They might be. It was minor. It was very minor. Minor noise. That was in spring minor. That was a, that was a spring joke. You know what else happens in the spring? What? Midwest saving time. <laughs> For the last time. It doesn't just happen in the Midwest. <laughs> Daylight savings happens for everybody. All right guys, so we pretty much have all of the suspension installed as well as the steering. So now we're getting closer and closer to getting the tires on. So right here, I have some Mickey Thompson Baja Boss tires. These are a 37 inch tire. That's a perfect size for this Jeep. Um, I really don't see a reason to run really any, I mean a 38 probably be good too, but up to a 40. On um, this engine, the axle setup the way it is right now, it just isn't that ideal. So we're gonna be throwing these on the uh, wheels that it came with until I can figure out what wheel design I wanna go with in the future. But for right now, I'm really excited to get these things mounted up and we'll uh, go ahead and get this Jeep out to alignment afterwards. With all the suspension components installed from JKS, I'm pretty excited to see all the gained ground clearance that we're gonna get out of this. Again, as we're working with an older weathered out Jeep like this one, we found ourselves fighting a lot of rust using heat guns and hammers to knock out bolts as well as some underbody maintenance by replacing bushings in the upper control arm mounts. For the most part, getting the old suspension out was somewhat easy and getting the new parts in was smooth sailing and looks just so much better. I went with JKS for a few reasons. Now, if you've ever watched any of our older episodes, you'll know that we've ran JKS on just about every Jeep uh, that we wheel pretty hard. So it was pretty much a no brainer because the, the components just never seem to fail for us and it's just a really good solid system to get. The fit and finish is top notch and it's all made in the USA. I mean, really, no reason to not go with it. Having the upgraded Fox shocks will transform this Jeep's overall driving characteristics to handle corners, jumps, whoops, and low speed rock crawling with ease. Upgrading the steering with Steer Smarts was another essential upgrade because if we plan on running rough trails with larger tires, the last thing we need is for a tie rod to snap or shear a drag link. Plus, I have no idea how we would get an alignment done with a factory steering setup because it was rusted in place and I promise you, nothing was going to get adjusted with it. With the factory electric sway bar not working, I decided to ditch the sway bar altogether since I really only plan on driving this Jeep on the weekends to and from different off-road parks and trails. You could say I like to live dangerously. One thing you're probably noticing is these upgrades are not cheap by any means. But that's kind of the point of this build. With all the money that we saved by buying the cheapest Rubicon on the market, we're able to reallocate the savings from buying that cheap Wrangler to buying proper off-road accessories to make this one seriously capable off-road machine. All right guys, so moment of truth, we're gonna see how much more travel we've gained out of this whole new lift system. So lift her up, Jordan. armor for this Jeep. We're talking skids, bumpers, sliders, tire carrier, all sorts of accessories that are made out of heavy duty steel. So we'll see you guys next time.